This video is brought to you by Alienware, featuring Intel Core i7 processors. Start gaming. Episode 3 of my Through the Ages series and yet again got a bucket load of comments on the last episode so thank you very much for that but as I'm sure you can tell today we're going to be looking at the SV-98 an infamous rifle for its fast rate of fire and extremely popular amongst the more aggressive snipers out there. Footage today is coming to you via my brand new gaming PC, the Alienware X51, which Alienware sponsored to me. I'll be doing a full review of this in the near future, showing off some hardware and benching some games. But if you want to check it out now, there's a link in the description that you can click on to take you to their product page. So, the SV-98, the rifle was introduced with one of the first Frostbite games in the Battlefield series, or at least one of the full games in the Battlefield series, Bad Company, and the rifle has been ever-present in the military titles since then. Similarly to the M40, the SV-98 actually started out in life as a hunting rifle, and it's also an ambidextrous weapon as well. But starting with Bad Company 2, the SV-98 was the third rifle to be unlocked in the multiplayer grind, requiring 6,000 points as a recon to unlock. It also has great hipfire accuracy, meaning you can take a pot shot at close range and maybe stand a chance of surviving. Either that or deal 80 damage to the body and follow up with a sidearm. This made the rifle a viable choice for any recon who wanted to run with the ACOG or Red Dot sight, making it much easier for players to use it in close quarters. The rifle did come as standard though, with this almost staple edition of the PKS-07 scope, which is either loved or hated I will say. It does have the widest field of view in Bad Company 2 of any of the scopes in the game. So this gave the SV-98 a big advantage over some of its American counterparts, like the M24 for example. Based on all of its stats, the rifle became extremely popular with the more mobile recon in Bad Company 2. Pairing it with the motion balls, C4 and an ACOG scope, you could become an extremely dangerous high damage soldier on the battlefield and still be effective in close quarters. Moving on to Battlefield 3 now, we see the SV-98 run a fairly similar path in terms of statistics here, but it takes on a different role in terms of its placement in the ranking system. The rifle was the first weapon to be unlocked in the recon class this time, needing 13,000 points to be amassed, and coming again equipped with the PKS-07 scope as standard. Because it was one of the earlier unlocked rifles, it was much more popular in terms of its usage than it was in Bad Company 2. That and the fact that BR3 was a huge commercial hit and had more players than Bad Company 2. It conformed to BF3's much faster gameplay pace, but still retained similar statistics from Bad Company 2, offering a fast rate of fire, large magazine capacity for follow-up shots, great hipfire accuracy, and the ability to down a player with a headshot at any range. The ability to be mobile, effective as a recon soldier again, made the SV-98 a really good choice. And finally, we have Battlefield 4, and here the SV-98 changed somewhat. It became more of a middle-of-the-road sniper, as I like to call it. Having its former glory of Speed King taken away, it was no longer the fastest-firing rifle around. That goes to the Scout Elite. It did, however, re-adopt the 100 max damage value that it had in Bad Company 2, which would stay relevant inside 12 meters, again making it a very good choice for close range combat. It retained its crown of lowest bullet spread from BF3 as well. Great opportunity there for players who like to get up close and personal to do some really great damage. As I mentioned, it's bested by the Scout Elite in terms of rate of fire, but the Elite doesn't have the stopping power of the SV-98. And the SV-98 doesn't have the stopping power of much bigger rifles like the M98B. 
but it's more mobile. So that's how it sits middle of the road in BF4. It does have a lot more rifles to compete against, and that's just a trait of Battlefield 4. There are many more weapons in this game. And I'll say it's not as popular as it was in Battlefield 3, but it's still got a very defined role, leaning more towards the mobile recon, but you can still get out there and deal some very good damage with it. Overall, going from Bad Company 2 through to Battlefield 4, the games that I play in this series, I'll say it was most effective in Battlefield 3. And whilst we're on that note, I'm going to now list all of the games that a weapon has appeared in at the start of these Through the Ages videos. Some people got a little bit annoyed in the comments saying that I only focused on the bad company games and beyond, which to some extent is true, but it's much harder to get footage of games like Battlefield 2, 1942 and the original Vietnam, so I just bypassed them. To make sure everyone does understand though, I'll still continue to use Bad Company 2, Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 footage in this videos, and I'll use Hardline where it's appropriate, but I'll list each of the games that the weapons appeared in at the start of every video. But that is the end. Thank you very much for watching, and thank you to Alienware for sponsoring this episode of Through the Ages. Don't forget to check out the X51 PC by clicking the link in the description. Leave me some comments down below about what weapon you want to see next, and while you're down there, drop me a like as well. But until next time, my name is Westy. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.